95 degrees Celsius under full load is the new normal for modern processors. But what does this mean for you and what do you need to consider when buying a new air or water cooler? We need to always keep up with new developments to ensure the best possible cooling and therefore performance of your CPU. However, the requirements for CPU cooling are constantly increasing and my colleague Martin Pajenkamp will tell us about this in detail. He's our product specialist and always follows the most exciting developments in the hardware and gaming industry. At the same time, we would like to take the opportunity to show you our new and super practical tool for CPU cooler selection in today's video. So Martin, welcome. Please tell us what has changed when it comes to the cooling of modern CPUs. Thank you for the introduction, Nam. We have been observing for quite some time how the fastest and best processes in particular behave when they are running at full load for longer periods of time. They always clock just high enough so that they don't overheat. This has the advantage for you at home that you can always get the maximum performance out of the chip without having to do much about it. Now, this is a big difference to the first computer that I personally built. Um, back then, you had to make sure the processor is sufficiently cooled or it would overheat. If it overheated, with a bit of luck, the computer would switch off to prevent damage. But then the computer was off, any progress was lost and I had to defeat the last boss again anyway. Modern CPUs, on the other hand, constantly adjust the clocks of the individual cores up and down to avoid overheating and thus a shutdown. In addition, today we deal with significantly higher clock rates. If these high frequencies are maintained over longer periods of time, it is completely normal and harmless to see core temperatures of 95 degrees Celsius. This is something that took me a while to relearn and accept. By the way, do any of you remember the AMD Athlon XP? I was able to run my AMD Athlon XP 1700 Plus at just 60 degrees with a standard air cooler. Okay, so processors switch off when they overheat, but why is it now even more relevant to aim for a powerful CPU cooler and generally a well-ventilated case? Well, it's no longer just about the temperatures. Since the CPU continues to increase performance until the temperature limit is reached, you actually get more performance with better cooling. The turbo boost can be maintained over a longer period of time if the processor cores are cooled better. However, temperature comparisons at full load are no longer suitable for evaluating the performance of a cooler with flagship processors, as the temperature with the smallest air cooler or the largest water cooling system will always be at 95 degrees Celsius. You need to go into more detail and also consider the performance. So the manufacturer specified TDB values. Can end users use these values as a guide when choosing the right cooling for their processor? Well, first of all, a TDP stands for thermal design power. So the heat output in watts that must be dissipated by the processor or that a cooler can cool. Although this value allows for a quick assessment, it is calculated and interpreted differently by each manufacturer and therefore loses a bit of its significance. In principle, you can cool any modern processor with any cooler, as the safety features are now so advanced that you no longer really need to worry about overheating damage to the processor. Rarely does a CPU run at full load all the time and requires high clock rates on all cores to reach dangerous temperatures. However, we acknowledge that anyone who spends a lot of money on a fast CPU doesn't want to leave any performance on the table. We have therefore optimized the motherboard check on our website and also integrated processors into the tool. In the new Be Quiet Cooler Compatibility Check, you will receive sensible cooler recommendations based on the selected processor and motherboard. The recommendations are based on our own tests, which we carry out for AMD processors from the Ryzen 7000 series onwards and for Intel from the 13th generation and newer. In the tool, you can see which cooler you can expect the longest turbo boost with by specifying the desired processor. At the same time, you will be shown possible compatibility issues with the selected motherboard. Although this is mainly the case with older models, we would like to save you the trouble at home if the selected combo of mainboard cooler and memory does not fit together as you had planned. You will also find recommendations on the product pages of our coolers, which processor model the cooler is best suited for. Which cooler is the best for you depends on the ventilation of the case and your own expectation of the PC. If you frequently render videos and therefore demand a lot of continuous high performance from the processor, we recommend you invest in a better cooler. A cooler with a larger radiator or heatsink 
generally also means that you can reduce the fan speed and therefore operate your PC more quietly while maintaining good performance. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. Now let's get to our new tool and helper. You can find our CPU compatibility tool under Service Tools and CPU Cooler Check. Select your platform from Ryzen 7000 and Intel 13th generation. You can see the compatibility with the selected motherboard and cooler rating. Example 1. Selection of CPU and socket without motherboard. You choose your Intel LGA1700 with i9-13900 for now without a selected motherboard. The Darkrock Elite and Darkrock Pro 5 would handle the Turbo Boost well. The Darkrock 4 only achieves 2 out of 3 points here and with the Darkrock TF2 I would not recommend it here. So you're playing it safe if you base your decision on the coolers which of course have a 3 of 3 rating. If you then scroll down a little further you can see which coolers are recommended for your chosen combination. Example 2. Selection of CPU, socket and motherboard. Now we select the AM5 platform with Ryzen 9 7900X and an AS ROG in the ATX form factor, chipset B650 and the motherboard. Here we can see again the cooler rating, but also where restrictions are to be expected under certain circumstances. In this case, we can see that due to the size of the cooler, attention should be paid to the height of the RAM used. Further information can be found by clicking on more information. Try it out for yourself. I hope that this tool will help you plan and build your new system. See you next time and please leave a like if this video has helped you.